think I got stuff sorted out. Just gotta switch this old Kambaruski. There we go. Look at this. We got used to stuff here, folks. I, uh, there's today's page. And, oh, I know what I'll put up for you. Um, this Friday's pages I didn't show. Okay, so I'll, I'll show those in just a second. I hope, hope everybody's doing good. I'm getting used to uh, a couple of changes. I'll talk about those in a second. Um, because uh, I've added on to the studio here. Always a work in process, folks. If you ain't moving forward, you're moving backwards. Not necessarily. If you ain't moving forward, you, you just maybe stand as still. So, anyhow. Uh, the page from Friday that uh, we'd started of the Celestial Sing Song. I finished that, uh, I finished that page and uh, ended up being a two-page piece. And uh, I got that posted. I didn't get that posted until into the weekend because uh, it was just a hectic weekend. And... Uh, you know, it was a lot of fun to do. I drew it in pencil and then finished it digitally. Threw a little Dick Clark, little little Rock and Eve in there. And uh, so there's page one. We got our Elvis types. We got our Donna Summers, Lionel Richie types. We got our, uh, hold on. We got our uh, Kenny Rogers, Dolly Parton types, which I've taken a little bit of liberty with everybody. And of course, uh, the digital versions of uh, Simon and Garfunkel. <laughs> yeah, no. Ah, we're having fun. We're having fun here. Anyways, um, so yeah, so that was that page. The page that I posted for today is uh, Let the Meet. And so this is one of those montage pages as opposed to uh, a series of, you know, elements in a sequence. This one is a uh, static image with a bunch of key little pieces of information embedded within it. And uh, it's, you know, it's mostly the sequential application of text as a, uh, over visual as opposed to the other one was a fusion of the two. Now, the other thing, the reason uh, that I'm a little ramshackled in how I'm posting right now is that uh, this page was done. Uh, this is a three page piece and, and so I've shown the original uh, uh, illustrations this is all part of that whole prepared prepared images that I'd had and uh, so here is some of these images that have uh, been worked on beefed up a little bit but this is a three page piece and I'd done the text on it and for whatever reason when I saved it it didn't stay so uh, you know, uh, I have to just copy it all out again. So it's uh, it's still on the JPEG, but it didn't stick around on the uh, the PDF. So, so yeah. So I just got to get that cleaned up, and then I'll have that posted as a Patreon exclusive. This Uno dos and tray. And so I beefed up the the penciled areas to be at least the same level of value as the background. Uh, illustrations because the penciled areas that are in those panels were really light and uh, so we I, I added a layer of themselves on top of themselves is what I ended up doing did a bunch of uh, fun fun little bits of business digitally adding in uh, little complicated uh, layering of, of colors in there and having some fun with that you know and uh, there we go. There's the beefing up layer. So it's it's a lot of uh, a lot of fun doing this this three, three page story. But like I said, I've got to do the text all over again. That's fine. That's fine. It's it's going on Patreon anyhow. Uh, and then there's today's pages and Friday's two pages. So uh, six page weekend of all things. And uh, I ain't got no complaints. So uh, the other changes that I made in the studio here is that. Uh, I've got, uh, bingo, I've got it set up a little bit, a little alteration to it, where I've added a third monitor so that I can actually focus looking at the camera and having the screen behind the camera is, uh, is where I'm actually talking to, to the stream. So I don't have to be looking 
all over the place and looking down there and looking over there other than to just click functions so that's nice uh, picked up a few different uh, little things and little bits and bobs but the majority of what uh, we got up to this weekend was really putting in place uh, some things that make it a far more easy and far more effective for me to be able to uh, to do things that and uh, I have been slammed with uh, busyness you know of getting some stuff done no complaints at all not the slightest tiniest bit of complaints I, uh, I appreciate being slammed and uh, I uh, appreciate the opportunities and I'm really quite uh, pleased to be able to be doing some things but um, so the, the reason that I posted that I'm only confirming that I will guarantee you that I'll be streaming on Thursday as opposed to saying I'll still be streaming every day is uh, I, I don't know if I'm able to each day so rather than promising and constantly disappointing I'm going this route. And this way I'm not always feeling like, oh, I gotta go scramble over here and do the stream too and I'm gonna be tired and that's no fun for folks. So, okay, so I'm gonna work on a suggestion. I just looked it up. Uh, I'm just sharpening a couple of my pencils and uh, um, I got a couple suggestions I pulled out of the book. Now, uh, not doing the streams has dropped my numbers in half. Not that I care about, necessarily care about the numbers and stuff like that. It's just, uh, I recognize that a lot of people prefer the streams over the videos, and I appreciate that. Uh, so I'm, uh, you know, I'm trying to do streams whenever I can. But, uh, you know, we gotta, we got to make sure that we're doing something at some point to take care of ourselves so that's what uh, that's what this decision is uh, okay so I've got the book of tricks out and uh, having the book of tricks out uh, I just opened it just before I started and uh, a person in a house that everyone knows is haunted and it says can anyone hear me so that's fun okay I'll uh, yeah I'll just put it on post it and put it up because uh, Again, I can't be bothered to climb across it into the my desk is too wide now. I had a pen. I had a pen. I had a pen. Na, 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 na. Okay, person in a haunted house. And now I'm gonna show you something fun that I got planned. I was just flipping through all these pages that are, are left. Okay. I've already made a mistake here. With this, writing down the suggestions. Person in a house that everyone knows is haunted. Did you know it was haunted? And uh, can anyone hear me? Papa, can you hear me? So, there's a uh, there's our suggestion, and uh, unfortunately, I don't remember who gave me this suggestion, so I didn't write it down like a silly person. Okay, here's a couple things. Uh, I've got these two pages here, and they have these fun textile patterns on them, and uh, so what I'm thinking is, wouldn't this just be a great place to draw a Victorian house? So this is what I'm going to use for uh, today's... Uh, pages well I think it might end up being a two page piece so but this is fun I can incorporate this you know um, darkness fly what is it darkness flies away flies away presence darkness flies away flies away come on in a haunted house page come on that's a no-brainer all right so I'll just uh, clip in the first well I got both of them actually but and we'll just get uh, as we say in the old country, crack a lacking. So if anybody has any suggestions or questions or thoughts or existential dilemmas, let me know and, uh, you know, we'll get uh, right on top of that for you and help you solve uh, uh, everything in your life. All right, so 
Uh, so here's what I'm thinking. All right, I want to make sure that this part here is uh, is not lost. I want to make sure that uh, we make sure to get. Uh, this part of the page to peek through. So I'm just coming in with uh, a jelly roll pen and I'm trying to pick out those letters and bring them up. And so I'll switch to the overhead. So once again, I'm still figuring out which way to look now. So I got three monitors side by side now. So, so here is, we're gonna just bring this up a little bit just so that uh, we can draw some attention to that just to pull it forward right but this will be this will be left as it is with the musical notes in, in place there because that's kind of fun so yeah You get the gist of that. I don't think I need to go in. Take a moment to, to keep filling all of that in. But, so if we look at, I'm gonna move you just a little bit. There you go. Good camera. So if we draw our house here, okay, and we put, uh, we establish, because our story is a person in a house that everyone knows is haunted. Can anyone hear me? Okay, so there's our suggestion. So it's ghost stories, and ghost stories are lots of fun. Hiya, Chris, welcome aboard. Chris Kaloon, gentlemen and ladies. If you get a chance, come and check out what uh, what uh, Chris gets up to on, on her channel. There are four people streaming at the same time now. Is that right? I'm yeah. I'm just streaming because uh, I said I would. I try to the occasional time. I'm not out to compete any with anybody or any stuff like that, but uh, yeah. Don't anybody feel obligated? They gotta stick around. But thanks, uh, thanks for stopping in. That's for sure. I just thought I'd start early today. I'm gonna keep going the same as I I normally do. I just started earlier. There's probably a lot more than four people streaming right now. That's for sure. Yeah, there's a great deal of people that uh, have discovered that there's, uh, you know, uh, Chris says, I'm on vacation this week. I would not watch anyone. The situation was different. Oh, I understand. Yeah, you're very busy. Um, so there's a lot of people out there that are just constantly I found that I've discovered this recently and I, I was unaware of it before um, and, and that is that they're constantly streaming <laughs> what do you call it? it it's I can't remember the term for it it's where you open up packages and uh, so here I am opening up these packages that I got in the mail and I'm like how do you get this stuff in the mail all the time because I had to I was curious so I looked at the uh the channel of this person and sure as beans they're opening one thing after another after another and i'm wondering are they really getting sent all this stuff and uh how is that a whole thing because you know i am old and naive so yeah i just i found that interesting i don't think i've ever really paid attention to that kind of thing before so yeah yeah, thank you. Unboxing, that's what it's called. Thank you, Chris. Um, yeah, unboxing. Uh, and it was, no, it was not, um, it wasn't them getting stuff. It was them being sent stuff was the, uh, was the way it was being explained. And I thought, well, boy, oh boy. So I started reading up about this a little bit, and I'm like, how does this come about? And it generally comes about because 
if you can't, there's X amount of companies there, and if you contact them and say, hey, look, I'll, un I'll open up your product and talk about your product on my on my show, the, many of these companies will send you stuff. And I've been offered a bunch of junk, of, like pet stuff and, and uh, you know, just random things. That, why, why am I going to talk about pet stuff? Um, but I've had a bunch of these ads come in for for pet for for pet products and uh, for gentlemen's shirts, and I think it has something to do with the dialogues that I have near my phone, maybe. That uh, you know, we got to get cat food, so now I got a pet pet product ad. <laughs> I guess. And uh, you know, I'm glad I'm not getting anything on the board because if that's how the demographic works, I don't you know why would I get any of that junk? But far too boring. Um, I just, you know, I don't, I don't have a dog, you know, and I don't want to do pet product things. Uh, and you have to, Chris says, I follow channels like this. You have to mention the product, review it, etc. Yeah, well, maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll uh, get some uh, dog food in, and I'll, I'll, I'll try it out and tell people what I, uh, what I taste. But oh, this tastes terrible. Oh, this is a bad idea. Right? Yeah. That, and it was probably the, uh, may do that wrong, make a mess of it and do it the wrong way. Okay, so I'm drawing rickety rackety old uh, haunted house. I thought about, uh, you know, doing it in a way so as to have everything looking all neat and tidy. But what I thought is the more that I draw this building, I want it to look more and more crazy and ramshackle and so that it's not safe to be in anymore maybe i thought that might be interesting and uh so i thought i would tilt different angles on different parts of the building so that uh, you got a sense that oh yeah that's not doing good because i'm trying to sell it as the haunted victorian house and i thought a good way to do that would be to draw it so that it uh it doesn't look like it's someplace that you want to go inside anymore. Maybe that it did once, but not so much now, you know. So this is the first approach we're taking to a person in a house that everyone knows is haunted. Hey, can anyone hear me? Which I think implies that they don't know they're haunted. Anyways, I'm not going to be doing the dog commercials, and I'm not going to be doing the... Uh, Uh, I can't remember what the other one was now that I got. Oh, is that, yeah, it's because we ordered uh, uh, some clothing and we're talking about getting me some new shirts. And I got uh, some men menswear. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to wear your branded logo nonsense. Um, okay. Chris says the contrast is looking nice. Well, the, So these are the, hold on, I'll pull out for a second. These are the last two pages that, uh, of all these pages that I prepared doing, um, scrapbooking is it where you're gluing down magazine images and look at this it's the the presence the darkness flies away flies away if that this little piece of musical note doesn't uh, fit perfectly into a haunted store a haunted house story and then i got these fabric patterns from uh, a magazine somewhere so that uh, again we're just trying to really play on that whole haunted house motif and uh, some of these elements really r work with that so uh, I think it's probably gonna end up being two pages today maybe we'll see I'm really kind of um, a little swamped right now and uh, trying to get a few things done right now and in ad addition to that uh, I talked about something uh, this last weekend that uh, is very uh, exciting news I found it exciting news. Um, so I have to figure out how to go about doing that. Uh, all the I gotta do a big uh, some promo for new book. So uh, yeah, you know um, I'm gonna be uh, sending out. Uh, some thoughts for some folks and 
uh, you know, like just, hey, what do you think of this? And do you want to do a sending some digital copies out to, to places and seeing if they want to do a, a talk about it or anything like that? Because uh, I haven't released a book in a couple of years. And in addition to not having released this book in a couple of years, uh, my last book was number 30 and it was in 2022. So, um, and this is the first time that I'm really releasing one since I started doing all of this. Um, you know, the streams and things like that and engaging in this larger global community as opposed to just doing everything from a regional basis. So, so I've got to figure out how to promote the book now as opposed to just doing tables at local things. So, I'm learning, I'm reading up about it. But it means I have to be uh, social and, uh, you know, I'm social now, but you know what I mean. Like it's a, I have to be part of the self-promotion thing. I'm not good at that. I'm just not good at that. I'm good at, uh, hey, uh, you want a picture drawn? I'll draw you a picture. But uh, your friend Gary, who, who comes to the, the channel here, Gary Hodges, big fan, uh, fan of his work. You get a chance to check out DVSM, four letters, on, uh, on interwebs and Instagrams. And uh, I, think, I don't know if he's on Facebook, I would think so. But uh, check out his work, it's really great. Well, he said that, you know, he, he tends to release a book and hide. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, that I'm necessarily too far off from that. So, you know, that's uh, just what it is. I'm learning to be better, but uh, I'm highly productive. I just, uh, at the end of the day, not as organized as I could be. So I'm just drawing a, a house, drawing a Victorian house and, uh, you know, just to, uh, just to sort of bring some emphasis. That's how I say uh, emphasis. You know, put some emphasis on uh, the sort of uh, awkward aspect of having this drawn white on a dark surface. Uh, Chris says, I met seven designers and illustrators living in my community yesterday afternoon. We sat near the lake and started sketching and painting. We do this every weekend. We created a group to share art. That's fantastic. Um, uh, Susanna says, sorry, I haven't followed your channel for too long. Your book is about what? Well, the new book is, uh, is about, uh, it's a collection of a lot of one page, uh, stories. I'll show you a sneak peek. You want a sneak peek folks? because you're my very special friend. Um, I'll show you a couple pages and uh, let's see what I mean. Is that even a mean burn? And uh, I'll switch the camera. There we go, there we go. So this is the format for the pages. There's green lines across it. That's just a measuring thing. But these are pages from suggestions um, that have come in. This is uh, an offering to the hamburger gods. I believe it was um, Malcolm, uh, Salty Snacks, that gave this suggestion. Um, here's the jockey. Uh, I believe it was uh, Chris that suggested the jockey uh, and so I write down the suggestions from folks and uh, and then I write down what my thoughts were that's what the text is that you see on the side and the reason that you see it on the side is that the book I mean oh there we go it's meant to be read like that so yeah um, so it'll open up and you you go through it this way and then on the, the right side of each page there is uh, there's the original uh, art 
for each page. So, uh, whoops, you've already seen this. This is Friday's page. So there's that, there's this. So you can see the different uh, approaches that I take in, in creating the images. And, uh, and then of course, um, you know, because a lot of those elements will switch around and change up. Like this is pretty much straightforward, right? Drawn on paper and, and uh, markers and pencil crayon. The, the middle guy is in pencil crayon. The side images are both in marker. And so I do a little, you know, beef that image up a little bit just so you can see uh, the techniques, I guess. And then this one is, uh, I painted the guy's hand holding it up in the air and then I painted the hamburger on a different piece of paper so that, uh, you know, <laughs> after I've scanned everything, I gotta cut these elements out in order to put them together. And then the original art for the rest of the page of these guys jibber jabbering is done in uh, simple line art and uh, and then colored digitally. So, whereas this one is directly done in simple line art and uh, and entirely colored digitally. So, um, but this this page, the jockey, you is uh, is this nice flat static image, just like the uh, the one of Lord Reginald and his lads. So these are both pages that. Uh, the original art except for the text you know looks pretty much what you uh, looks pretty much what uh, like what you're looking at here so whereas this one's a few different random pieces of paper so you know um, there's uh, it's a 78 page book and uh, this picks and chooses from uh, well last year it was 358 pages that I did and so the we picked pick and chose through that and pick these 78 pages. So so I'll be uh, announcing date and links and all that stuff, but I gotta do it in a way that, uh, you know, allows me to connect with people and, and uh, I'm still figuring all of this out. So, so there you go, folks. Yes, I did here first. Uh, Susanna says, it's a lot of work. Oh, yes. And Alpha Omega says, great illustrations. Thank you. It's very nice. Yeah. So it's, you know, all these different medium that I that I use and all these different approaches that I take on, on storytelling, it really is, you know, just trying to explore and allow myself to try different things and to, to stretch myself creatively and not get locked into a very specific rut, you know, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. There are people that are out there and they like to just, they'd like to do a specific type of thing. That's great. Power to them. I'm a big fan of that. So uh, I myself am constantly uh, mixing stuff together. Like this is uh, magazines and different papers and it's all on a, a an actual black card stock. And, uh, and so all of these little different aspects of things that I'm putting together right now the idea is to make it work as a cohesive as a cohesive image, a cohesive series of images, almost like a sequence, and uh, and to assemble that narrative, that story from those. But why not allow ourselves to pursue um, different approaches and to pursue different ways in order to you know, to, to try to find uh, that voice, that narrative voice that we have inside. And by whatever means is not the point I'm trying to get to. Now, Chris says you produce art every day, Christopher. That's amazing for me. I don't have that much time to do art. Well, this I'm in the studio all the time now. And to do the one pages is, uh, that's my flex time. That's my uh, time to just, oh, you know, I just want to do the, the uh, my thing for a minute, as opposed to the doing of other people's things. I I, uh, I was stopped in at a stream this morning, and somebody had asked, you know, where I am, or you know, the, am I really not going to be doing streams for most of the time? I just confirmed that I'll be doing streams on Thursday. It doesn't mean I'm not doing other streams, uh, but I can guarantee that Thursday is the day that I'm always going to make sure that I'm here. But, uh, you know, 
Did you ever think of creating a character, a personage, and draw a series like Asterix, etc.? Well, yeah. Um, I've done... So I did... Um, I did three books of space opera story. That's, that's uh, one book that I did. I did 11 issues of Elmwood. I did... Um, you know, I've done a number, quite a number of short stories and created characters for so many of these short stories. There's a, a w bunch of one pages that are the recurring mad scientist character uh, 500 years from now and then whatever the crazy thing is and every time he shouts, science! You know, uh, like resurrecting Elvis for the holidays. You know, things like that. Um, rocks are cool. That's another mad scientist page where he tries to convince people that rocks are sexy. Um, just... Uh, there's a whole bunch of different long-term projects that I've done uh, where they went over a few different issues or a few different uh, a few different stories um, but and then uh, I was working on uh, streaming conceitedness and I realized that my style had changed so much from when I started the book uh, I honestly I mean and I mean a drastic change so I would have to go back to the start of that book and really fix a lot of it and I just know time to move on I've got an entire book done of a village haunted that uh, I have not yet released um, and uh, you know lots and lots and lots and lots and lots so there's I appreciate the question though um, but is it like a specific I'm only gonna do this character thing no I don't think I could do that um, and it's only because I am too clearly too all over the place Chris says it's just a stream coming up with Miriam on Thursday. And Chris likes the Sasquatch book. Yeah, that was fun. Um, oh yeah, we got to figure out when we're going to stream uh, around Easter. We got to figure that out, Chris. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm always the the one page story idea of people just suggesting an idea, and then having to come up with some kind of a structure of story on the fly with uh, no preparation and what are we going to do it as today? Like, what's our approach today to this piece? And uh, that, I find, has really helped me grow dr in a dramatic way creatively and, uh, and really shaken up stuff. Like the... Okay, another sneak peek. Cats and kittens... This is uh, hold on, it's coming. There's uh, there's a sneak peek at uh, what it's gonna look like, and I mean even the cover, in the cover image alone, I've tried to show all these different approaches I'll take to <laughs> to illustrating stories and all these different mediums that these different versions, of course, of this crazy person sitting at his, his desk made of bookshelves and um, yeah so you know it's uh, it's uh, always trying new stuff always exploring new avenues and uh, seeing what we can put together so I don't think I at this point in time could just sit and work on one project for very long I mean I've got a couple th different things I'm working on right now that are whole 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 projects but they 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 have a conclusion. It's not like I've signed up for a long term gig. And I've never been one to think for a moment that I want to draw, you know, for you know superhero books or anything like that. So Chris says I can be with you on, on Friday. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, let's uh let's figure. I'll check uh, our our schedule. And, uh, and we'll make a plan. Okay, so here's our first panel drawn. What are we at? How long have we been going? Six days? Okay, all right, good. First panel. So here's our haunted house. And uh, everybody knows it's haunted. I think that's a fun, fun suggestion to, to come at it that way. Everybody knows it's haunted. Everyone. So... It's a person in the house that everyone knows is haunted, and except for apparently the person. 
So why don't we uh, pursue that a little bit more? Let's draw. Um, so let's work on this next panel. Is the pencil crayon? No. See, the, the matte medium isn't allowing this pencil crayon to take hold. So that's all right. How about this one? Hey, you win. That's charcoal as well. OK, well, you win. So let's uh, let's get crack a lacking on that. If I can uh, get a lead out of it, maybe that's why I wasn't using it. All right, let's um, let's come in here and change our approach again. I'm, what I'm doing right now is that I'm pulling out a watercolor set. A watercolor set, Chris. Yeah. Let's go key boys for you, folks. All right, so let's, are you, uh, oh, have some messy, messy kind of uh, schmutz there. Let's get that out of the road. All right, so I've got some white, uh, this white watercolor paint that I'm gonna use. And uh, I'll get you out of the way, move over. I'll put you on the other side. So, because we've already got our the first house built, <laughs> that was fast. Let's uh, let's come in with this and uh, add a little more to it. Add a little bit more variation in the value and build up the grounds here at the very least in the foreground. And maybe I can get it to uh, the surface to be a little more agreeable. Chris is doing a dragon drawing with watercolor pencils right now. Cool beans. Cool beans. So I'm just going to come through and uh, just push out a little bit of value in, in certain spots. Just to change up our shape language and start to make you realize that there's a little more dimension, a little more form. You know, by putting shadows to the one side of the image, we'll try for see, we'll try that. Uh, for what I see in your art, it's uh, expecting the unexpected. Yeah, I guess that sounds good. I like that. Uh, you're more than welcome uh, to take a, a run through the. I post the pages each day on Instagram and Pinterest uh, and Instagram and Facebook, and uh, you know, and I'll put the suggestion underneath and and what I used underneath, and and uh, if people ever have questions, you're always welcome to say, Chris, why, you know, or whatever other questions you might have, and I promise to give you more than. Uh, I don't know. So, all right. So we got this coming together. Let's uh, let's all go to the lobby. All right. So we'll do. We're gonna draw now with with the, the paintbrush here, and uh, we'll put in. We'll draw the front hall of the of the household, and we put in the staircase, etc. But this way, you know, by drawing in the watercolor, it, it's going to have a little more. Oops, sorry about that. I was a little bit off there. Uh, it's going to have a little bit more variation in, in uh, diff definitely different values. You know, a little more variation in the fact that uh, the opacity is going to be a little more all over the place because we're doing it in watercolor now. But we'll figure it out, folks. We're all in this together. I'm not overly worried right here about having that clean border edge on an image because I can cut out the parts that I want in, uh, after I've scanned it and tighten up that edge, so. 
So we're just putting this room in scale. A little perspective here as we've moved into the staircase, the front hall. And uh, we'll get, uh, get this put in here so we can go down the spooky stairs. Oh, the stairs. I haven't uh, used anything other than just white so far. Um, I tend to start with one, th you know, one aspect and then decide if I want to take that further, if I want to put, uh, you know, some black to it or some different colors to it. Uh, and it's, it's, by simplifying, it allows me not to have to overly think or be too concerned right now about getting all these specific details and how am I gonna approach that and how do I draw that in this way? I am just throwing down this large value in the surface and and then we'll go from there so whatever works for folks because this is already on a pre-modified surface like this is a tissue paper on top of a construction paper with a wash of uh, acrylic paint over top you know and uh, so if I'm already starting from that position we'll see what it uh, lets us do like here's a here's a fun thing there's a resistance right here where I'm putting, or I tried to put this pillar, the idea of a pillar in here. Well, the, with the tissue paper underneath, it's resisting the, uh, the watercolor, but that's okay. That's all right, folks. We're prepared for this kind of event. I come in there and give that resistance a little, Hey, how's your mother doing? Talking to. What are you going to do with a jelly roll pen? A jelly roll pen. Yeah. So, this is just putting together. Yeah, see, it's not going to let me go work down there. It's all right. I'll get it. The white is very opaque. Is it gouache? This is a jelly roll pen. This is just white, uh, white uh, watercolor. It's all about the application. And so now I'm putting in some little details with this jelly roll pen and I'm picking out some of the little highlights that I want. You know, let's us just take things a little farther than we might have a, a otherwise. Let's put in a chandelier. And uh, we'll get some, some lines. Defining that ceiling line a little more clearly. Da, 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 da. All right, and then here's our entrance at the top of the Z stairs. So it's coming together. We're getting our little hallway built up here now. Um, what I need to do is get uh, some stairs in here. Let's see how agreeable, disagreeable. Yeah, totally disagreeable. That's going to be. So we'll just come in and uh, so I'm running these stairs across and then you can see right there, there's the transition as soon as it goes over that uh, the tissue paper that's under the surface there, it's working a little bit bit as a resistance there, so that's all right. Get these last few stairs put in this way. That's all right. We got the technology to fix that. And uh, just because uh, we can.
Where are you hiding? Oh, pen. Let's come in with this pen here. And, uh, and we'll come at the other part of the drawing from the bottom up. And so what we'll do is we'll put uh, some of these details of the foreground in and this way. Almost like it was a plan. It's not a plan. So I'm just defining elements in the space and we're putting our composition together that way. Too wet there. Yep. There's our staircase coming in. Sorry, I'll tilt that back again for you. I apologize. I remember we read paper around a lot. Yeah, so uh, this is a fun suggestion. I, I can't find, I have to go back and look for the post-it note. I save all of those when I write stuff um, not in the book and then transfer it to the book. I save uh, where I wrote it and I'll go back and make sure I get this person's name. Yeah, Cause I don't want to be that guy. Hey, give me a suggestion and I'll never give you any credit towards it. No, that's not cool. It's not how we work here. People get suggestions. I like people to know who it was. Yes, he told me to do this one. Yeah. So there's our stairs coming in now. And uh, we'll have to wait till this top part dries a little bit more. And then here's the entrance to our hallway. Now there's a couple different ways I can do this. I can try to implement some kind of floor pattern because we've got these patterns already existing, right? And this could very easily be what's on this floor. But uh, for now, we're just gonna allow it to be abstract shapes. And uh, that'll do the trick for us for the moment. So while this is drying up top here, now we can put some, some wall hangings here. Put a big, uh, big oil painting of uh, Lord Pomplamoose, whoever might be up there. Uh, some more elements in our chandelier there. Oh boy, people are gonna think we know what we're doing. We know better. Okay. Just don't overly think stuff as you're working. Is my uh, is my suggestion. Just pursue your image, listen to your intuition. So so we're just putting a little more detail as we go. Uh, Chris says, it's interesting to see how the textured paper helps uh, the drawing. Well, I think that it gives us it presents to us a number of opportunities by working, you know, on these different pre you know, prepared surfaces. And it affords us opportunities to try moving in directions that we, we may well not have done had we, do, had we only sat down to uh, black lines on white paper, you know, so if we get presented some option or some opportunity because of working on a surface that, you know, we've already started to develop, who knows what that can give us? Like, who knows where that could take us uh, with, the, the, with the one over the other? Some people really do stick with static surface and uh, 
I only draw digitally, or I only do that. Chris, you're trying to, uh, you're, well, not trying, you're successfully getting into doing some digital work. And it's a very different uh, approach than, you know, working traditional elements. But at the same time, there's a lot of application in that. Follows the same pattern. So that's words that I'm drawing on right there. That's kind of fun. It just becomes a texture, right? What does the word mean? Nothing. The fact that this can f sort of fall in with, you know, the idea of a page, that's, that's great. That's a lot of fun for us. Okay, so I just want to build up this little panel image there. And then we'll put some more of these little pieces of details. Chris is learning, uh, oh, there's lots of learning for Procreate and I'm just doing landscape digital painting there. Oh, that's lovely. Okay, so here's our floor. Now, now, now what? See this destabilizing that's happening with the watercolor. I like it. I like that a lot. It's giving an interesting piece of texture. I'll hold this up. It's giving some interesting texture down at the bottom of that. And so as it dries, it'll separate still a little bit more. And that's great. That is, you know. That's cheeseburger level, level fun. Not just hamburger. We're going with a cheeseburger on that. So, okay, so we've got some stuff started for our first two panels now. Uh, so I'm going to go through in here for a second and I'm going to start doing this black contour line around these really unnatural white trees. And uh, my intention with that is, is that uh, I want to push that back. A cross hatch night sky. So this makes it even more, a little bit, a little bit more eerie because it's either like a photo negative or just a creepy backwards way of looking at that house. Uh, hi, Tina. How are you? Tina says, is this the Severn cabin? The summer cabin. I love the idea of the summer cabin. I do not own a summer cabin here in Gold, Canada. Just never, uh, never went that route. I've got, uh, we've got five kids, so. Picking up a cabin wasn't necessarily in the cards for X amount of years when you're raising short people. And uh, now, empty nesters. So, lots of, uh, lots of time for fun in the sun like a cabin. It's not like we got a bazillion more dollars of money though. Even when those kids grow up and move out, you know, my oldest is 32. I myself am uh, 39. And holding. She's getting more and more awkward each year. She gets closer to it. Okay, so we've pushed that uh, dark value in there. Um, do I remember the stencil I made? Uh, I'm making stem stencils to use in my jelly plate tomorrow. Thanks for that. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, there's a couple of, let's see, let me see, I should have it right behind me. I think, yeah, there's a couple of stencils that I've done that way. 
Here's uh, here's the forest one that I did. I'll put a piece of paper on it. You can see it. Here's the forest stencil that I did, and I've used this a few different times. And uh, what works with something like that is that you can incorporate it in a bunch of different different pieces. So rather than doing something like this heron, I think it ended up being a heron, uh, like that, because that's harder to use a bunch um, um, over a bunch of different uh, you know works. Whereas with something like that, with the forest or the trees, you can do you can put that in all kinds of things, right? Uh, Tina says my oldest is forty and I just turned fifty. <laughs> Actually, I stopped saying the. I've been doing the Jack Benny joke for years. Of uh, you know, I'm turning 39 again this year. If you're good at something, why change? Um, that's the Jack Benny. And now uh, I just I just flip right forward to the George Burns. People say, "How old are you, George?" And he'd say, oh, "I got to be about 100." I mean, I'd retire, but who's going to take care of my parents? You know. So. Anyways, yeah, try to do stencils that allow you to use them uh, on multiple things, uh, Susanna. Okay, so back to this. We've got these two panels coming together now. And uh, here's our first two panel images. There's the outside, there's the front hall. And our suggestion today is a person in a house that Everyone knows it's haunted. Can anyone hear me? That's the suggestion. That's a lot of fun. So I'm putting some jelly roll ink down, and then I I tamp it out with my finger. I diffuse it down a little bit so that uh, we can. It's not so opaque, right? And uh, and then when we come in here and we apply it we're going to use it as a highlighting element. So the uh, doing some lines around the, the path there. Or if we put some lines like so on the side, let's, again, let's do what we just did here and diffuse that down a little bit. Hiya, Gary. Gary Hodges, everybody. I was talking about you earlier, Gary, and telling people about your books. Welcome aboard. Gary and I will be on a stream tomorrow um, with Mr. Jim Lulon on his channel talking about developments on his full feature animation animated film that he is doing. Okay, so there's our staircase up. And uh, I think what might be fun is to do um, so these panels, while they're a little discordant here on the page, I can scan them and move them around to whatever sizes and whatever, you know, uh, scale, like whatever scale that I need them at and, uh, and whatever organization on the page that I, or pages that I need them at. So I'm not overly focused on everything being perfectly side to side to side. We're just going with, uh, our gut in whatever moment that we're working. So, uh, I think it might be fun to do an image of somebody like, you know, th that's in the austere, you know, uh, Victorian ghost who's, you know, who's in the in, in the image. So let's, let me see, let's see if I can get to, no, still the same. Uh, I'm trying to get pencil marks happening on this surface and it's just being disagreeable. So let me see if I can get this, uh, It's a charcoal that I've got here. The lead is bro fairly broken inside this. Uh, don't let your grandkids use your pencils, folks. They're going to do stuff with it. Stuff that's not going to let you be able to use them yourself. Okay, so if we draw, so I've just switched over to this, this, uh, it's a white charcoal here. So let's draw. Uh, let's raise his eyebrow up. So we'll put uh, a gentleman ghost in here. Now I realize that this is really going to be easy, to, quite easy to smudge. 
so I'm going to try not to. He says, and then brushes it with his finger. And we'll get our guy in here, and then we'll throw some some black in after the fact. But let's get him. Uh, let's get him down. So we're going to do a painting in the hallway. Spooky painting of a relative, distant relative. Chris says, I never let anyone use my professional tools. I have special color pencils for my niece when she comes over. Um, my, uh, I have had many a, a situation of grandkids using stuff, and I'm, you know, I'm all right with it at this point. I buy them stuff specifically for them. It doesn't mean they're going to stay with it. And, uh, you know, I encourage them to spend whatever time they want in the studio just because uh, it's hard enough this day and age to, they're not teaching kids uh, creative uh, self-exploration, creative expression. They're just not teaching it like they used to. There's no allowance for it. And I'm sorry, but you have an opportunity to to redirect that that path in any way, shape, or form that you can. Please do so, because we're gonna have a lot of boring society and a lot of boring kids in the future if we don't. Okay, so I'm drawing our gentleman ghost, and we'll put a frame around this crazy kid and uh, give him a. Big beard. Am I drawing that in camera? Okay, just want to make sure. <laughs> Am I missing stuff? Hey, it's just April. How you doing, just April? Is that better? That's better. Is that alright? Is that alright? Is that okay? So here he is here, and we'll put. Uh, we'll give him a. What do you call this? Feathery. I call it a pirate shirt because I'm basic. But what is it? Uh, Give him a fancy, fancy shirt. Art and creative art teaches. Art and creative art teacher. More than it's a big loss for the kids. It sure is. So I uh, gone into schools from grade three all uh, the way up to uh, postgraduate business school and uh, taught creative self exploration and uh, you know I got an opportunity to chat with. Uh, Chris's class in, in Mexico over the uh, the magic of the interwebs. It's uh, it's important that those of us that have some facility to do a thing pass that thing on. There's no point in being greedy with it. There's no point in trying to hoard it for yourself. If you have the ability to, to encourage somebody else to take on the same approach that you found enjoyment in, please do so. All right, so here is our guy. We'll put him in a fancy coat. And big uh, ruffles for his, his shirt. And we'll put him uh, resting on a cane. Uh, almost a year ago, this June, that class was great. Well, let me know if you want me to do it again. I got, I love it. I love helping uh, people out. Now, you know, Chris doesn't exactly teach kids. She teaches uh, all kinds of professionals, postgraduates, and yeah. And uh, other hand, our other arm, sorry, out onto the hip. Is our sophisticated gentleman. Hey Jim, how you doing sir? I was just telling people about your, uh, your stream coming up. Everybody knows that's the stream to watch. So here's this guy coming in now. Uh, 
Yeah, I tend to, I tend to be a big proponent of allowing yourself to to go off into your head and try to remember like try to imagine places and it's you know individuals and stuff like that more so than leaning into uh, sticking to resource materials and the reason that I do that is that I want to uh, you know it, it'll it allows the reason that I want to do that and to do that myself and to encourage others to do it is that it allows you to take stock more of the things that you're drawing and uh, to have a clearer understanding of of what that is and how that's built up and and uh, what what this signifies and all the little different uh, headspacey things that you're not going to think about unless uh, unless you're you know really accessing your creative imagination and if you're just regurgitating a source image and there's nothing wrong with taking the time and learning from from source material nothing at all anybody tells you that you say no um, but uh, allow yourself to to jump into your own brain pan and try to uh, cook up images as best as you can if they look terrible if it looks like the craziest line you've ever seen well the next line drawing you do is going to be better we live in a society where it's all about uh, producing the, the beautiful perfect thing and we don't give ourselves enough of a break on what it is that we're, we're doing and how we're going about doing it and the processes involved and the exploration and the creative development no it's got to be perfect right now okay so here is our gentleman in the large painting and we'll put a frame around him in just a sec uh, I'm multitasking with work and here is this. <laughs> it's just April. Oh, I hear you. I, uh, I really had to figure out how to uh, optimize my day. I've got a couple projects that I'm working on. And at the same time, I, I don't want to stop doing this and uh, with you. So, you know. And make sure my uh, my timetable is is taking account of the things I need to do, the things that uh, I'd like to do, and make sure that those two things are in balance. Because at the end of the day, I need two things. Oh, they win. They win. Uh, I have a friend that, uh, really, really fun guy. He has to schedule out uh, his film viewing experiences. <laughs> He's so booked for time. I try to plot out which specific films I'm going to be able to watch this month, what times I'm going to be able to watch them. I'm like, okay, you're booking yourself a little tight. Come on, Jeff. Anyways, Jeff is watching this. He knows. This is just me reiterating a conversation we've already actually had. You're fucking yourself too tight, Jeff. Okay, so here's our gentleman ghost. And uh, just because, let's, uh, let's uh, throw some red in on him here. In his uh, attire. Now I put this little bit of texture in here with the pen but I still want to do something with uh, the red, largely because we got that big value of red that's peeking through there, so why don't we lean into that? <laughs> There's a session up there. Uh, but wait, whoa, whoa, what? What are you saying here? What are you saying, Chris? Put work first, then art. 
Oh, my. What? Yeah, no, you're right. I didn't hear you. Rachel says you shush. Huh. Yeah, Jim says that looks great. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> I do it and I call it abstract. It's the way I roll. <laughs> Does the one gym so fast too? Oh, well, that's very nice. Yes, thanks. Okay, so I want to pick up on this red, and then I put some red into the jacket, and uh, you know, and then we're also going to take some of this yellow here and give a sense of balance across the uh, the image, and so we're going to come in with this uh, yellow here, which I think. Not too. It's you know. It it would take a couple of, of layers to, to get it because that's an acrylic. This is a water base. But we're going to put this yellow in his pantalones. All right, and then uh, we've got our our frame, a picture frame to put in here as well. Uh, it would be scary to see that ghost. It really would. He's not uh, the kind of guy that you want to, you know, just hang around and have a cheeseburger with. Or whatever you do with ghosts. Ghosts like cheeseburgers. I can't assume that they don't. That's not very nice. Post living. Huh. So uh, the one project I'm working on, the, a term needed to be uh, come up with for uh, organisms that are no longer living in this book. And post living <laughs> is what was come up with. I, I don't think I'm giving away the anything here other than just a fun term, you know. You gave away our story, you're fired. Who ah, cares? Uh, I'm scared to see if that goes. Job page for the art material on the internet. Oh, yeah, I hear you. Uh, as we say in the South, I didn't marry well, bless my heart. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, well, I, uh, Roy and I, uh, I'm really lucky that I found uh, Lori. She found me, put me in a headlock one day, and said, you're coming with me, pal. Anybody has seen Laurie on the channel here, you know that's not at all what Laurie sounds like. So, um, but yeah, we were both married before, and uh, they're both characters. So I'm doing this little diffusing thing again, putting down some of this jelly roll ink, and then, uh, Camping it with my fingertips there. I gotta make sure to, to be aware here because uh, we have a, a study group we're going to meet up with tonight, and uh, you know, I'm gonna come covered in paint and marker, and <laughs> as is my usual. I, uh, I don't know if I brought down. Oh, I didn't. I was gonna show you what I was drawing. Well, here, I'll do this. Give me one second, folks. I'll be right back. Just give me one second. I'm going to grab some. If I could finish these videos that I've been making for the for the stream, I would have put one of those up. Okay, so here's what I doodle on. Uh, this is what I was doodling on Sunday. Uh, 
I promise that I do pay attention to what is being said around me, but I doodle at the same time. So this is one of uh, some of my Sunday drawings. Anyways, it's not a straight. I don't know why I'm showing you that, but he's sort of like this guy. But yeah, I uh, even when I'm sketching like that, I'm always covered in pen and ink and whatever else. Pretty much an all the time thing for me. Hi, Linda, welcome aboard. You to see you. So I was saying this morning uh, on somebody's stream that uh, I am guaranteeing that I'll always be here to stream on Thursdays. It doesn't mean I'm not streaming other days. I just I'm not guaranteeing it just because I got so much going on at once right now. And uh, it, but it's all good stuff. Um, for anybody that's stopping in late, I did some sneak peeking this morning, this afternoon, whatever time it is, wherever you are, and uh, showed some things that uh, I'm going to be announcing very, very soon. Okay, so we've got the house, we've got the hallway, we've got this painting as we're going up said hallway. I have a nice pencil. There you are. So we're just going to put the little white line edge around this. So ideally, if you catch a hold of that, and then you see our guy pick up here, you're going to know what we're referring to. We've been haunting the same joints this weekend. <laughs> uh, oh, hello. How are you, Marisa? Sorry I missed you there. I'm missing a whole bunch of chat. Oh, sorry. Job page of the material. Uh, if that's a ghost, then I'd hate to see him as a live person. Yeesh. Yeah. Uh, hola. Hola. <laughs> see my B-Ray back note. I'm so sorry. Um, Let's see, am I all cut up? Does the ghost come out of the painting? Hmm. Well, maybe. The suggestion is a person in the house that everyone knows and is haunted. Can anyone hear me? Um, so let's, uh, let's try this, okay? Let's zoom in on the face in our next image, okay? So we'll zoom in on, on this guy. And so in this shape of a panel, all right, we're gonna have just a tighter shot on the eyes, on the face here. And what we'll do with that is that we'll have his sort of a cocked eyebrow type thing. And then that way we can have him sort of looking at who's walking by my thing. And then, you know, it's just a little piece of fun for us, right? We know that the eye in the painting shouldn't move. Or did it move? Was it always looking that direction? Why was it looking that direction? So I'm trying to capture this, these elements that are in this face. And uh, but we'll have his eye clearly to the side and towards the viewer. Just, why not? A little piece of fun. Just getting right into a haunted house motif. The so I'm just trying to build up some of these directional lines. Put a little bit of uh, weight in his eyebrow, like so. Is that coming through? Mm. Chris, are you rehearsing all of your lines and getting into character for tomorrow night's stream with me? Yeah, 
Oh, yeah. yeah I've been practicing my Ethel Merman impression. I got a problem! It's going to be great. Welcome to Jim Stream! And so we'll give him a little bit of uh, ridging in his forehead here. So we're just thinking about the face, right? And and an easier way to do this is to, you know, to look at uh, a surface, you know, like a mirror or something like that, or take a picture of yourself in a camera and study those aspects of your face or when your eyebrows are moving about. And uh, you practice that enough, you should, should have some kind of gist of how that looks on a face. And then you can apply it to images you're drawing of other people. April says, uh, is a ghost coming out of the painting? Some paintings are just freaky, just saying. There you go. <laughs> if you're in a place where the eyeballs in the room, or in the painting in the room, are following you around, you, you need to get out of that motel. <laughs> because there's a young fellow who lives uh, up the hill who's going to come and talk to you about his mother. Yeah. That kid's a weirdo. Okay, so if you check out um, uh, Jim Luan's stream, look at J up Jim's name and, and, and subscribe to him because he's a brilliant, absolutely brilliant animator. He does a stream called, Hey Man, How's Your Movie Going? And, uh, and he talks about the processes of making uh, an, an independent animated motion picture by himself. And his project is coming along swimmingly. Very exciting. Okay, so <laughs> the mushrooms you ate weren't right. <laughs> yeah, don't experiment with things off the forest floor, kids. All right, so as we're tightening up on our image, and we're going to try to capture the hairline that we see up here. In the uh, the other version we have of his of the image, yeah. So that's tomorrow night, I believe, at uh, 10 p.m. EST, Jim. Why don't you tell us in California time? Jim's in California, everybody. Okay, so we're not doing the whole face. We just want to focus on the eyes in this shot, right? Should we get the other side in? Sorry, just bear with me, folks. We're getting there. Yeah, Jim's a really funny guy. He's going to have uh, myself, Paul Pate, who, uh, uh, brilliant, brilliant uh, writer and artist, just finished his third graphic novel, and uh, he's also an animator, and uh, Gary Hodges, he's a brilliant writer and uh, artist as well. Thanks, Chris, only three more Heymans. Oh, that's cool news. That means he's coming to, uh, that project's coming along, that's what that means, folks. 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Tuesday night, 7 p.m. That's how you say that. Okay, so here's our shot of the spooky guy in the painting. Pull up some of these details in the face in a second. Chris, let's get this. There we go. 
What have we we've used a white mark, a white uh, pen, a watercolor, a charcoal pencil, <laughs> ballpoint pen. We're out of control here, folks. Uh, trying everything here, the kitchen sink. So now we're just going to put uh, some white pencil crayon in here and try to pull up some of this. Uh, oh, Avery's already signed up. Look out. Look out. So we're picking and choosing out some areas here now for the white pencil to go in there for the raised areas. Think of it like the lighter spots are closer to you and the darker spots are farther away. Okay. So here is our ghostest with the mostest painting. And then the next panel is going to be this um, image here that uh, the music that uh, this is just a scrap piece of paper clearly torn out of a musical book that, uh, that I was using here. use a larger ruler but you know that sounds like being organized and then we'll put uh, I'll come back in and do this after because I'm just gonna go around everything that uh, you know build all, all of that up but I just want to pull Make sure not to lose this. This is his cool darkness flies away, flies away. And then it says presence. And if this isn't meant to be part of the ghost story, I don't know what is. All right, so. I'm well, sorry, but I would do back 40 that pain. <laughs> That pain would go up in the conflagration. So yeah, so we'll, we'll add in that. We'll, we'll pull this together, but in the meantime, it's gonna, gonna build up that black a little bit. But. All right, there's panel five done. Boy, that one took forever. Okay, so, and then, all right, where are we going next? Person in a house that everyone knows is haunted. Can anyone hear me? Do we want to have the ghost in the painting? Are we bringing him to life? Ruler, call Janet Young. It's a broken ruler. Janet would yell at me for that. It's, and it's only half of a, st of a statement there. What have him do to you? <laughs> Uh, I guess the other half would say, do unto others as they. <laughs> That's good. All right. Uh, so how about we, uh, we've got the painting. So if our painting's here and it feels like it's looking forward, and then we have our painting looking like he's looking off to the side, I suppose what we could do is, uh, well, let's try this. Let's try to have our... Uh, Our painting looked directly at <laughs> the priest. Uh, let's try to have our painting look directly at us. And uh, we'll go from there. play with this a little bit so and I've got another one for the people that were involved on Friday 
Thursday, end of last week, uh, I did a draw, and then I let each of the people in the draw pick uh, a word, and I'm, I've done a page based on those four words. So, I will be showing that. Uh, I'll be sending it to them first, and then uh, I'll be putting that up on the Patreon as well. All the extra stuff, including the three-page story that, uh, that I did this weekend, and then for whatever reason, didn't save all of the text on the three pages. I, I just didn't save. I think that my computer was a little overworked at the moment. Save some more? Oh, come on. You know. So, just got to finish uh, lettering that again. I've got it on the one. Uh, I just have to save it too which I can get it uh, on the Patreon. That's six pages I did this weekend because I know that uh, I just want to get some of those things done because I've got these other projects that I've started. So, which is why I've also said, I promise you I'll be here Thursday, but I haven't guaranteed other days of the week just for the time being. Just because I've got these other projects to finish. So, uh, I'm now trying to draw these eyes in menacingly as the idea is that the painting is looking directly at us and so in order to carry this over if it isn't plainly obvious uh, for a reader one of the things that we can evaluate is well what can I do to support this textually which isn't just the painting looks at me and then having a drawing of eyes looking at you um, we can you know go along the, the lines of house like that you never know who's watching you and then this painting is focused on you so and then another thing that we could do to just make it a little bit extra on the fun side is that we can then draw this painting on the staircase where he's not in it right Everybody knows this house is haunted. We're trying to set up a tone. So the expectation is this place is haunted. And, uh, and the people that are in it. So we've got to introduce those people at some point. And I think the way to do that would be you know, to have them roam, roaming around the place with, with flashlights. So we'll explore that in just a moment. I got a network with the high IQ peeps. Y'all some deep thinkers up in here. <laughs> and your little Wayne boys. <laughs> They're all going to make you lose your mind. Okay, so, carrying on this. This black. From the panel above. So the reason that this panel is as wide as it is is my intention is to have space for the dialogue on either side so it doesn't interfere with these eyeballs. So I'm going to overlay 
concentrate in certain parts of the eye there. I want to draw the attention of the spooky eyes. Uh, Chris, you know I'm going to have nightmares about them eyes. Yeah, well, you know, it happens. You can just imagine how the nightmares I give myself, for heaven's sakes. that short. It's a kind of uh, page where Kinda gotta scan it as soon as I'm done before I smudge off parts of it. So I, I as I'm drawing, I tend to uh, write a lot of the page while I'm working, and uh, with this one. I just sort of figured it out right now. I was trying to figure out where can I go with this story. And uh, literally as I'm putting these marks in here as we speak, it just sort of dawned on me. Because the suggestion for this page is, person in a house that everyone knows is haunted. Can anyone hear me? It's a fun suggestion. I apologize if it's your suggestion. If it is your suggestion, let me know. And I'll look up whose suggestion it was and make sure I get that written down on the post tomorrow. Um, okay, so here's our crazy face. And uh, so the idea here is that the, uh, the text that can go on either side of the, the eyes, the face here, is uh, you never know who's watching you. You can have on the one side. But on the other side, right away, it allows us to, to just push that envelope a step further. And we can have a uh, text from the ghost saying, who dares to enter my home? Right? Or maybe he's saying, who dares to enter my home? Who knows what his voice is like? But the point is, is unhappy for our being there. And and so this allows us to do a shift now. So I'm gonna pull uh, out the camera here. So we've got this much of this this these images coming together now. We've got the house, we've got the the staircase, the spook you enter into the spooky the spooky building on a dare or whatever it is. And uh, you see the painting of the, the the former master of the house. Uh, and then we, the paintings, uh, the eyes moved towards us. And we, you know, and we put this piece of music in here because it just enhances the mood, really, right? And uh, and then, you know, we can say everywhere you, you know, it feels like eyes are watching you from everywhere. And then we can immediately enter into the, who, you know, who dares to enter my home? And, uh, so now it allows us to do a switch. We can do a little shift, a little switch over and have the viewpoint be from the explorer. So now we can jump over to, you know, the Scooby-Doo gang. Well, we're not gonna use them specifically, but we can get, you know, here's the, 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 the kids, the teenagers that are going through the house going, you know, like, dude, this place is totally haunted. Right, haunted? Yeah, so, or whatever they talk like. Uh, the, the ghost, <laughs> the ghost led you watch out. Nice. Okay, I've got a wonderful question of the day for you and the viewers, Chris. April asks which pencil I'm using. This is a uh, charcoal pencil. This is a 
Faber Castell pencil crayon. This is a white jelly roll pen. This is a Paper Mate black ballpoint pen. And uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, Jim, what's the question of the day? Hit me. Don't hit me. That sounds good. Prone to crying like a blubbering baby. Wah. Wah. Mm -hmm. Teenagers with cameras. Oh, their phones. Excellent. Yeah, with the lights on their phones. Perfect. Perfect idea. Okay, yeah, we'll do some of that. Uh, okay, Jim's got a question. Uh, that's a great idea. But the um, question of the day. Jim's question of the day, is, people, has been interesting. This could involve soup. That's all I'm saying. This could involve soup. So if we have, so let's look at it from this point of view. All right, if we draw, and no, it's not going to let me do that. Maybe what I'll do, I've got some black cardstock here. Maybe we'll do some scribbly dibbling on this one too. A lot of crayon shaving everywhere here. Okay. Jim's got a question of the day. We're waiting on his question. Question of the day. Jim's got a, a really interesting question for us there, uh, folks. Uh, Chris says it could have been that these teenagers were challenged by a TikTok video, and that's where they finished it. Haunted house. Oh, I like it. Okay, so if we, let me think. Rumble, rumble, rumble. Switch of pencils. I like that idea. Is that what they do on TikTok? These kids and they challenge themselves? Each other? Like, guys, you should go and check out a haunted house. Alright, so I'm... Drawing in the kids. Some are dangerous challenges, unfortunately. Now that's not cool. All right. Well, I'm drawing a young person with a bit of a light from the hall around them. And we'll put a second person over their shoulder. There's your couple of kids. It's the Hardy Boys. I'm looking for Nancy Drew. All right, here we go. Jim Lyon says, Question. As an adult, have you lost a tooth? Suddenly, not removed, but abruptly lost a tooth. Yes. Just April says, I'm so glad we didn't have TikTok in my day. Good lordy. Very <laughs> grandma old. No, I, uh, I don't, you know, I don't think we can. Uh, technology has changed so much. And uh, the last 20 years, I don't think that uh, we can ever uh, prepare ourselves for, uh, for any of the, the things that are to come right now because it's switching around so much. Tina has to go. Well, thank you very much, Tina, for hanging out. Uh, I appreciate it very much. And as always, if you've got a suggestion, feel free, folks, to put it in the video or in the chat or in the comments on any of the posts and stuff like that. And I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to do a... You know, something based on your idea there. And you never know what's going to turn out as, though. Uh-oh. Uh, okay, so here's our teenagers. And we'll just do a little bit more. 
I'll start to define the hallway a little more in just a second, but I'm going for that lighting effect first. And then I'm going to have to draw the same thing in the light. That's all right. Um, Jim says, how? Hockey? <laughs> um, so uh, the reason I'm a type 1 diabetic is that I have uh, seizures. And, you know, um, I have uh, clamped down on my teeth so hard that uh, they shatter. <laughs> <laughs> they come out so it's yeah you know you asked and um, I uh, I'm not one of those people that have uh, gone in and taken that out there so yeah strong like bulls not like street car this is why I got the lovely choppers you see Chris for the win. I didn't want to win that one. But, uh, you know, it happens. But now I got teeth I can take out and chase people with. So <laughs> it's really intense. Wishing you the best health, buddy. Hey, appreciate it. I'm fine. Go on. These are uh, these are the challenges that some of us are given, so we don't take over the world. All right, so we can uh, we can use this and, and incorporate this into into our uh, our page, and uh, and then we can draw some teenagers, you know, looking up, looking down, looking all around, and uh, you know that way. To have them exploring the environment and to switching the direction in the story, you know, it kind of plays on some of what we're seeing here. And even though I'm drawing this on a random piece of, of black, you know, previously folded card that I just found here in the studio, um, what, it, uh, what it can be done is once we've scanned it and put it into the page, well, we can do a, a, a light, uh, you know, yellow layer over top of it, or we can do some more stuff to incorporate it more similarly into into uh, some of the aesthetic that we have on the page with these multiple colors, you know, mixing through from the, uh, the images that are under the surface. Uh, I think that uh, the idea would next to be to draw the kids. Well, let's do what we, we've been doing lately, which... Uh, I've been told uh, is helpful, and boy, do I like being helpful. All right, so um, if we've got, here, I'll do this with the old fountain pen. All right, now, if we've got, if this is our page, okay, and we've got our Victorian house here, okay, and then we've got a shot where we're going down the hallway, and then we, you know, or up the staircase, I'm so sorry. And then we see our uh, ghost with the most inside the picture. And then we cut in on, you know, I think that I'd like to reverse this a little bit and have the music moving across the bottom of these three panels. And uh, I'm gonna debate how I approach it because I, you know what, now that I'm thinking about it, if we put this panel here okay with the house and then we put this the staircase here and then we place the music like so and then we do the next image is the feller in the painting the old feller in the painting there and uh, and then this panel we're gonna blow up the eyes a little bit so here's the eyeballs that way and uh, and then this next image down below continuing this motif of the 
oops, I'm sorry, I've gone to the other camera and I didn't jump back, I apologize. So as we've got, you know, so here we are. Panel one sits like so, all right? And then panel two, we'll blow it up a little bit so it's closer in scale to that, like so. And then we put the music for panel three. And then, and then we do the hallway shot of the painting for four, or er, four, one, two, three, four. And then we zoom in and blow up the eyes for number five. And we can say, you never know who's following you, right? And then when we move next into this image, here of here's the close-up shot like so and so if we do this for our first page sorry I should be there okay so for the next page because this can be a couple pages well, I'm drawn fast enough I'll work on it tonight have some fun maybe I'll do a stream uh, what we can do for the next one is as soon as we have we can start that top corner with some kids with the uh, the 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 uh, light in their their uh, cell phones. I was going to call them camera phones. The light in their cell phones here. So here's these two kids in the dark, and then we'll clue in on the, or we'll zoom in on the two faces of the two kids, and and we'll take this pose and we'll blow it up, and have it cut across, and we'll so we'll have them going. Oh my God, this place is completely freaky, you know. So so. The eyes first, not the guy. You think so? I think that having the painting and then having the eyes move is uh, is going to sell the idea a little bit more clearly. And because here's this painting, and then you still see the same face in the painting, looking over the side, and then looking right down at you, right? So. If, or uh, the other option for this panel might be to have, uh, you know, a light moving in the, like a couple of lights moving around in the room like this, and one to cross the painting, to cross over the painting as they're going up the staircase. Right? Look at me, I'm stairs. Um, that might be an idea as well. Right? And then that way, when uh, we see these guys patrolling around in the room on the next page, and, uh, oh, Bobby, I'm so scared. Don't worry, Betty. We got, you know, I got you covered. Um, and, then, uh, and then we insert right here the eyes. You know, eyeball, eyeball, I'm cross, burr. And, uh, and then we can cut to a wider shot of Bobby and Betty right here and then we can have the ghost standing behind them and then this is this is the turn it's important to me when I'm doing uh, whenever I'm working on projects I always like to have a turn and what I mean by a turn for this is that uh, you know at this point when the ghost says with the eyeball picture who dares to disturb my home you know and uh, and then we cut to the, you know, we know these kids are exploring around the haunted house on a dare, TikTok dare, as, as Chris says, which is great. Um, so then as he sneaks up behind him and says, leave if you know what's good for you. And wow, I can't, you know, I can't believe this place is supposed to have, you know, be haunted. And the man who built its ghost is never rested. And he's like, and, and then the last panel, of course, is, uh, you know, it's him going, can anyone hear me? Why does this always happen? You know, da 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 Because, you know, the, the turn sometimes is the thing that makes the story direction more interesting. Because the turn sort of takes it from, we're setting it up, and we're setting it up, and we're, we're setting it up. So then when you turn on the angle and have the, he, this, as spooky as we're setting the ghost up to be, he's completely ineffectual. Because he's a ghost and these kids can't see him because for whatever reason, maybe they don't believe in ghosts, I don't know what it is. But by doing it in this way, generally an audience isn't expecting it. I mean, you guys know about it, and I know about it, 
because we're in cahoots and making it. But, uh, yeah, you know, that's how I think I finish it. All right, well, I have to go back to doing the things I have to be doing. So thank you very much, everybody, for coming and hanging out. I really do appreciate it. Um, I, yeah, I'm definitely going to be here on Thursday. I can't guarantee that I'm going to be here every week, or I'm sorry, every day of the week at 2 o'clock. That's the reason that I've only really said that I'm going to be doing Tuesday. Now, I believe that Chris and I are going to hang out on Friday. So I can promise you that we'll, I'll be by on Friday, and I'll make sure that I got my schedule planned for that. So in the meantime, uh, I'll be posting videos each day as I'm doing whatever at night, or I'll do streams at night. I don't know yet. But what I do know is that I have obligations and stuff, and they're, you know, that are taking up my mornings, and, uh, and they might lead into my afternoons. And so I don't want to say I'm going to be doing streams and not do them. That's the only reason I've made these statements that I've made. Uh, so I'll, uh, I'll do my best to let people know when I'm going to be doing whatever I'm doing. In the interim, tomorrow night, 10 p.m., EST, on Jim Luan's channel, look for Jim's name in the chat, J-I-M-L-U-J-A-N. And uh, I'll be with uh, Jim, Gary Hodges, and Paul Pate uh, on the latest episode of Jim's stream, which is called, Hey Man, How's Your Movie Going? Okay, so hopefully we'll see you there. In the meantime, I'm back to work. Great. Thanks very much, everybody. Bye for now.